Hello there, UK OK here again and we're going to now do the second part of uh, the dehydrator videos and in this one we're going to see the results from uh, the dehydrating. OK, so first of all we're going to turn it off. OK, and take the front cover off which just pulls off like so. If you remember yesterday, I put these in. Um, oops, hang on. Yesterday I put these in. Uh, there were three trays of courgettes, two of mixed potato and turnip, um, patty pan squash, and mange too. So we're going to have a closer look at them all now. Um, someone online asked me how much it costs to use the dehydrator. Um, I would say uh, in response that um, from what I've been able to gauge online, the, the research that I did before purchasing one or before having one gifted to me, um, it is very cost efficient. Um, insofar as there are nine trays, you can dry, dehydrate a lot of food with those nine trays. Um, you know, I mean, just tons and tons of food you can fit on all of them. So I think the costings that I read online were based on American um, uses of electricity, kilowatt, etc. Um, but from what I gather, it's between 50 pence and a pound. Um, but it, other, there's, there's some query there about that because on, on other ones I've seen, uh, on other sites that have discussed this, um, in the UK, um, I've seen it uh, on forums that some someone mentioned three pence an hour. I don't know because I don't have one of those meters that you can plug into your socket and find out how much it's using. But I know that I used it all last winter because um, I was buying lots of frozen veg before I got into veg make uh, veg growing myself. So um, I was dehydrating loads when I saw it all on offer in the supermarket at silly prices, and my um, electricity bill did not go up significantly so if it had have done then I would seriously have considered selling the product because uh, selling this on because um, I wouldn't pay an extortionate amount to run it um, so it's minimal I would say compared to the savings you make by growing your own and dehydrating it okay let's get on with the the um, results okay so this as you can see uh, is courgette that yesterday was put on there fresh from the garden and in quite, I don't know, what was it, sort of, not a quarter of an inch, some slices, but just underneath that, just um, a little bit less. Now I'm going to show you one, and it's like a crisp. They dehydrate, obviously, taking all of the water out of everything. And um, you know it's done. The other side, because if it's been on the Paraflex sheet, the other sh side always goes shiny. So that's typical um, of what your courgettes will look like when they have been dehydrated. And as you can hear, they crunch. And you would just rehydrate these in a soup or stew or in some warm water, um, etc. Um, but they, how I store them, let me just um, pan over here for a second. I just want to show you how I tend to store my dehydrated foods. Um, I use a Le Parfait jar or Kilner jar and um, I put my sliced courgettes in there and I have other ones with broccoli in. Let me just, I'll quickly show you the broccoli if I can. Oh, it's rather dark in there. Sorry. Um, let me just, this is my pantry and I'm just trying to, there's no light in there, I just want to show you this one. This is dehydrated Chinese vegetables and um, they were, it, that's about five bags, five pounds in weight of Chinese vegetables, bean sprouts and water chestnuts, uh, munch too, etc. And that was from Frozen when there was a fantastic offer on at Morrison Supermarket, so you can see it takes up very little space. That's my doggy, who usually has to appear in videos, so I think she wants to go out. 
Okay. Go on then, Belle. Good girl. Right, sorry about this. So, um, yeah, it takes up very little storage space. You'll notice in this that there are these blue sachets. They look a bit like sugar sachets that you get from uh, a coffee bar or what have you. Um, they're actually oxygen absorbers. Very difficult to get hold of in the UK. Um, I had to um, put a bid in for some on eBay and uh, got some at a very reasonable price along with some mylar bags which are like these silver um, bags that, that preserve food for a very long time if you seal them um, with a hot iron etc. Anyway, so that's there. there is a place, I'm not sure of the web name, it, it might be it's something like self-sufficient or, or something like that. It's not not by um, the brothers who do all, do all the, um, you know, the book and what have you about self-sufficiency. But there's another place. I'm sorry I can't think of it offhand as I'm saying this, but they sell oxygen absorbers. Um, but you really have to be a bit savvy if it's cheaper to get them from, the, from America or what have you because they're pennies over there and over here for, I don't know, 20 or what have you it, it costs significantly more so be a bit savvy anyway so as i've shown you these are the courgettes paper thin and lovely really i mean i could just eat them like that not everybody would i understand so we have those three trays of those let me just get those out so that i can show you what else we have right that's the three three trays of courgettes so let's just go back over here and um, if you remember the pars um, not parsnip, potatoes and um, turnip. Now the turnip has gone very, very crisp. I can't even break that actually. That's so hard. And the potato chunks are dehydrated rock hard. And then they will just go in a jar. You see they take up, I mean, that was quite a, a large amount of potato. But that will take up a small amount of room in a glass jar. Um, by the way, the oxygen, oxygen absorbers um, keep, it, uh, keep any moisture out, obviously. They're kind of self-explanatory um, in that sense. Um, they aren't essential. I mean, if you're going to use your food within six to twelve months or what have you that's fine but you can store them for longer um, if you use the oxygen oxygen absorbers um, okay this is the other tray of potato and turnip and then we had this is really shrunk this is a tray of the patty pan squash i mean you can see that all of the water you can see how much water was um, the patty pan squash consisted of when you see how it's like this now so all of the moisture has been taken out of it actually looks a bit like apple but it is the patty pan squash that I've grown in the garden and that's when you know it's done when it when it's crisp like that and you hear it snap that's when you know it's completely dehydrated and lastly is the Monge 2. Now, some people might think it's a bit of a shame dehydrating Monge 2 because it's so good fresh, but I've had a lot of Monge 2 from the garden so far, and I want to preserve some um, for the winter months. Obviously, it's not going to taste as freshly picked um, because it's been dehydrated, but it does preserve your vegetables and fruits really very well. So, you can see that they are we hold it up to the light and you can see basically transparent and very thin and when I crack it it splits so it's done um, so basically that's the end of the video you've seen how it all turns out it takes up very little room it's cost efficient to run the dehydrator and I highly recommend it even the, the, the very inexpensive ones, they do significantly um, better than you might think. I'm going to sign off now because we're just at under 10 minutes. 
So thank you very much for joining me and uh, God bless.